Hello everybody. In today's video, we showcase an immersion cooling demo for an electronic component. We start with the PCB geometry, which has few individual solid components. Shear topology has been applied amongst these different components. The PCB board is surrounded by an enclosure. We have an inlet where water will flow in an outlet for the water to exit and the wall for the tank has been marked we transfer the geometry to fluent meshing you can insert a clipping plane to see how the geometry looks like set up the initial mesh configuration for the surface mesh to be created So we'll be creating a conjugate heat transfer problem. So we want both the solid and the fluid regions. One will automatically identify the boundary condition based on the name sections. In this problem, we'll be adding boundary layer. We will be using uniform boundary layer with the first cell height of 0.15 mm. And finally, we will generate a polyhex code mesh. As the mesh is generated, we can look at how the mesh profile looks like. We can also look at the inflation layer proof. Now we switch to the solution. Mesh will be transferred to Fluent Calculator. You can look at the geometry. A few solid materials are added to the problem statement so that they can be used up at the appropriate location, like polymer, aluminum metal, substrate. Also, fluid material have been added. The heat generation takes place in the chips. So, we will look at the solid bodies which are representative of the chips. To add the heat, we will use the source term. The source term value is defined by expression. The first part of the problem will be set up as a single phase problem, so the multi phase model will be set to off. We will use a transient formulation. The fluid material that is being used for this problem is liquid water. Next, we will set up our report definition to track the maximum temperature at all the cell zones. Initialize the problem. And we will run the calculation for 500 time step using a time step size of one second. The maximum temperature of individual cell zone is recorded using this report definition. We can see how the solution is converged and how the maximum temperature has reached a constant value. Now we will start setting up the multiphase model to see how the solution changes when we have phase change. First phase will be the liquid phase, and the secondary phase will be the vapor phase. Default settings will be used for the drag coefficient. We will set up mass transfer mechanism for liquid to vapor conversion, and we will use the D model to set it up. We'll reduce the saturation temperature to 320 Kelvin. With the reduced saturation temperature, we would expect the phase transfer mechanism to begin as soon as the solution starts. 
and the temperature should start dropping. We will create another volume report. Using this report, we will track the amount of vapor within the system. So we will create a volume integral. Now we will set up the time step sizing to multiphase specific using the adaptive time advancement. We will reduce the initial time step size to 1e-4 and start the calculation. We can see immediately that the vapor phase has started forming. On the right hand bottom we present a scene of PCV temperature with vapor volume isosurface. The top right hand corner curve represents the total vapor volume in the system and the curve on the left hand side represents the maximum temperature in individual cell zones. You can see the vapor volume has reached a steady state and so has the temp maximum temperature values. The overall benefit of adding mass transfer is that the maximum temperatures are much lower than when it was a single phase problem. Thank you for your time.